prep, this one for the electrostatic slab, we're going to spend 10 minutes doing the following. We're going to read through the cookbook lab with an eye toward preparing it for use in the lab. Uh, we'll talk about how to research the equipment we're going to use, how to get hold of the background physics, uh, and we'll visit a little bit of that for electrostatics. Uh, we'll talk about prepping a fallback lab report in advance and then how to explore experimental design directions both before and during the class. So let's start first by talking about reading the cookbook lab and for that there's a show and tell. I promise. Hey everybody, let's walk through this electrostatics lab and let's do it in the way that we would do and prepare it in the way we would prepare it to be able to use this document efficiently, not while we're reading through it, but when we just come to it again during our lab time. How can we make it help us there? So we begin the way you'd always would. You'd look at objectives, you'd read an overview, etc. look at equipment, you might even take note of who to thank. You do all that, and then you do a quick walkthrough just to see what's going on here, there's an investigation, and it's investigation one that suggests this is getting a scotch tape charged. That suggests there's a second investigation. Oh, yeah, two scotch tapes charged. Okay, so what do we do with the first scotch tape charge? We, we're going to uh, take it in steps. Activity 1.1 1. 1 is make the tape, and now I get to see how it goes. But I look them up, and I write them down here. I turn this into a little guide, a little mnemonic for me. I'm going to make the tape. I'm going to zero the bucket. I'm going to put it in and then transfer the entire charge in there and measure it. That makes sense for activity one. And then I'm going to write down as I go a few key tips, right? Paying particularly attention to what's the physical setup look like? Are there key instructions that I could easily screw up? Sure. What leads go to what bucket, etc. I might be able to figure out why eventually, but for now, just write down what they say. When I see a, a key thing like this, resolution, and I remembered I saw, wait, a range, is that the same as the resolution? No, not when I think about it. This is the largest and the smallest charges that I could measure, but how well can I measure them? Well, five picocoulombs is the resolution, and I might remember or even figure it out again that to get a plus and minus of plus and minus point, excuse me, plus or minus 2.5 picocoulombs, I have to cut that resolution in half, etc. I work my way through and get to investigation two. This time I'm going to make two tapes, get the charge, compare the charge of the top tape to the bottom tape, get the charge in just the way I got the char charge in investigation one. And then I'm going to do something different, though. I'm going to quantify that charge differently. And I'm going to skip through some of the helpful guides they give us and some helpful background. And I'm going to go to this force diagram in this wannabe force diagram in the making here. They, they give us some idea how to cut, how to think this through and analyzing it. There's a, there are two tapes of the same length. Uh, they've got the same charge on them. Um, they've got uh, some center of mass uh, and a distance between those center of masses. That enables us to analyze it, and we can generate a force diagram from this, F equals MA or F equals MG in this case. And then there's the Coulomb force, which is a new force. I'm going to write that down, new to us together. If it's not very familiar to me, I'd certainly write them both down here. Uh, even I could even begin my, uh, my analysis, my force diagram. That's the sort of thing I would do before lab, physically and boldly on this lab document. Good. And if I did do that, then I would have a document in hand even when it's two days later and I am busy with calculus. Okay. Um, in general, here's something we won't do every time, but you got to know how to do it, uh, so let's introduce it. Um, there is a document, it's in the link dump, that uh, applies to Physics B, and it's all of the lab sensors, uh, options, and specs that are used throughout all of Physics Lab here. And in particular, there's a, a page, you'll find it, uh, for the passport charge sensor that we're going to use. And the very first thing you do, this, this um, slide deck is prepared exactly for this, is to, 
is to let you know what the specs are when you need them and you look for tool error, you look for resolution below. The problem is in this particular case, it's not there. You might remember I just mentioned uh, in the last video this range versus resolution distinction and you can see the range here but no resolution. So what do you do? Well, you ask Google. What's the resolution of a passcode charge sensor? And you get, up comes, uh, link two or three, uh, you get this PDF instruction set, and in it are these specifications, which provide both the range and the resolution. And sure enough, the, re the resolution is the five picocoulombs, as the document says. So you'll have to do something like this every time you use equipment, and this slide deck will be useful to you, generally more useful than it was this time. You also use, um, with that sensor, you gotta get that sensor to talk to your computer, to your software, and in order to do that, you can either jump it directly through Bluetooth, and I won't go through that here, but you could. And you could, by the way, not only use your computer, but your mobile device, and SparkView comes as an, as a, uh, as an app for that as well. But here, uh, the, the whole, document that we just read through is set up with a 550 interface and in fact that's what you'll have set up it'll be available to you on friday and what it does is connect to your charge sensor which is in turn connected to your very cool bucket and also connected to your software and to sparkview software in particular sparkview uh, is the pasco baby brother uh, there is a capstone, which some of you uh, have used last semester. Um, maybe you've used both of them last semester, but SparkView is very, very simple. Uh, it's interfaces like this. You can't do as much with it, but it's really easy to do it fast. So that's sufficient for our purposes today. Let's look a little bit at the background physics. We mentioned in the walk through uh, the Coulomb force, uh, it, perhaps that's uh, maybe not brand new to you, but perhaps you haven't taken a look at it. Um, for uh, since high school or even uh, maybe that's a year and a half uh, ago for you or who knows what it is. So um, no one introduces Coulomb's law without pointing out how nice it is in parallel with Newton's universal law of gravitation. You can see they're really a lot alike. Uh, the units with the exception of the mass versus the charge units are, uh, are just the same. Um, it's just that um, the, the Coulomb force is considerably uh, it's got a larger constant, it's a stronger force. Uh, the other distant uh, difference, of course, is that uh, the gravitational force is always attractive, where only sometimes that's true for um, the Coulomb force. It's true between opposites, but not between like charges, excuse me. No, that's right, it's true between opposites, but not between like charges, which repel. Uh, this K you'll have to use in your calculations, it's the Coulomb constant, and it's about nine times 10 to the ninth, well, this unit, and there's multiple ways to give these units because you could pull uh, Newtons out of this as well. Um, but here it is, the, the key thing that you need to know is uh, th this, this new thing called the electric constant. You'll get a better introduction to this in lecture, no doubt, um, but here I just wanna say that um, while you don't need a value for this, just a value for K is all you need here, the electric constant is a big deal. And you can see it's, it stands in relationship to the speed of light and to some other magnetic, um, not the, this is permittivity, the other one is, um, it's got a different name, but uh, they're, they're quite alike. Um, and there's, uh, there are a couple other constants you're gonna need to get to know as well while you're here. So begin to take note of those, although for now you just need K and you just need its value for our purposes today. Let me give you a hint of the mechanics. We're gonna draw force diagrams. Uh, these are not quite the full force diagrams, but they do lay out the components. Um, it doesn't do the trig yet, and I'll leave that to you as an exercise. Uh, you'll have to measure those things. Um, these are a different, a couple of different ways. I'll let you uh, figure it out yourself, but there's a left side, a right side, um, just a, a Y side and an X side separately, and then what would it be like if you only had one of these forces in play? Uh, all of that here. So um, let's return to the lab. Let's return to the cookbook lab and the idea of writing a report for it. This 
year, this semester, what you ought to try to do is come in with your lab report largely written. Now, you haven't done it yet, so how can you do that? You can tell more or less what it's going to look like if all you did is the fallback, the cookbook activity. So you can write that, and almost all of that is going to be the foundation for what you do, or maybe you knock something out, but you have it sketched, not very carefully, but you have it all sketched and set up. Then you come in into lab, and some people get right to work on doing that. It may be all of you, or if you happen to be able to multitask in parallel because you've got four members. Um, you may break up into two and one if you've only got three, or two and two if you've got four, and then sketch a more ambitious set of experimental design ideas. You can do that in advance by asking questions. Here those questions might be, well, can we do this with something besides tape and compare them? Or can we put uh, charge in something other than a bucket? Or can we measure anything besides charge while we're doing this, et cetera? These are questions you can ask in advance. You come in the lab, you see what's available, and then perhaps you parallel process. Some doing the basics, some seeing if they can set up something more interesting. Okay, that's a quick prep for lab, close to 10 minutes. See you Friday.